the main problem is. The main problem, <laughs> considerable amount of people who are watching this, sorry, is that I'm not tall enough to actually see what the printer is telling me on its little screen. <laughs> That's what some of this shuffling is about. Right, I've got my flower. Something done while it's sorting itself out. Flower cocoa powder, I've got my sieve. Oh, bless your hearts. Some of you have liked this, that's very kind. <laughs> right. Ah, here we go. I always feel a certain amount of pressure with technical problems because I am trained to teach physics to A-level. What does that actually mean? if you can't fix your printer. Here we go. Yes! It says the printer is idle. It's not wrong. Okay, let's try printing that again. You can <clears throat> you can come down here and look at the holding screen now. Now that I've finished with my computer. What's over there? Splendid. Here we go. Some questions for you to ponder, and the list of things that you need because you might not have them. In fact, oh yeah, Alien has a message for you because you do need one other thing. We're going to take it a little bit further than I thought, and you need some water as well. All right. I realise what it is. The YouTube screen, I think, is a little bit different <clears throat> to the Facebook screen. It's super interesting technical detail there. Right, I just need to prop you up a tiny bit. That's better, isn't it? Right. Yes, got my little quiz. Good. Later. Now, let me shuffle the chairs. Now I don't need to reach the printer anymore. Okay, <laughs> gotta go and get, put my moon costume on. That sounds way more exciting than it actually is. <clears throat> but probably another three minutes. Sorry, folks.
sorry, sorry, I'm here. I'm here. Are you still here? Let's have a look. Oh, you're still here. Oh, you're just so lovely. Right, I'm gonna pull this blind down so that my face doesn't look strange and shiny. Ah, oh, we can start. It's like my favourite lesson so far. So sorry, so much wrapping. Okay. <sighs> right, you lot. Jug of water, yes. Okay. Flour, baking tray, hundreds and thousands. Yes, yes, yes. Here we go. I'm flipping. Hello everybody! Hello! My name is Lara. It's Theatre of Science! Home Ed! So this is Astronomy Lesson 2. Last week we learned all about uh, Earth's atmosphere. Don't worry if you didn't come to that one. It's a whole new lesson on the moon. Hence my amazing moon outfit. So a lot of people on Facebook yesterday were asking if they could see the other side of my hat. And I was like, no because you can't see the far side of the moon. But I will explain that and show you the far side of my hat at the end of the lesson. Right, I never do this, very teacher thing to do. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna learn about before we learn about it. Yeah, here we go. We are going to today learn how to recognize craters. Maria, what even is a Maria? Uh, the terror of the moon. Uh, it's mountains, and we're going to learn a little about, about, bit about moon soil as well. So actually, if you ever do um, IGCSE astronomy, a lot of this is on the that syllabus, so it's all very useful stuff. Right, let's just do the activity, because it's a bit of setting up. Well, while we're doing that, I can chat to you about the moon. So what we're going to do is, we've got a baking a cake tin type thing, put some flour in it, sieve it in is best, do, I don't know, about an inch layer, and then get some hundreds and thousands or some crunched up cereal, maybe some couscous, just something like that, and sprinkle it over the top. And then we're gonna put some cocoa powder over the top of that. Again, it's better if you can sieve it. Um, don't use too much cocoa powder, because mine is really expensive. And then we're gonna drop little pebbles onto it to make craters and see how the craters of the moon formed. Okay, so all of this actually is from um, NASA's YouTube video. I think they've just called it NASA videos and you look for moon crater activity. I'll, sh I'll show you what's to do now. Right, so, um, yeah, while I'm sieving my flower then, some basic facts about the moon. How did the moon form? This is totally amazing. So billions of years ago when Earth was very, very young, it got hit by, a sort of a planet, a planet about the size of Mars, just whacked into the moon and a huge bit of Earth broke off and became the moon, got like trapped in the Earth's gravity. So how amazing is that? So the moon is, is like very much a part of us in more way than one. Um, you can't see the far side of the moon because the moon is what's called locked in. I think we'll talk about this later, but it, the moon goes around the Earth in the same amount of time it sort of takes the Earth to spin, so we only ever see one face of the moon. Um, while we're sieving the flower, I might just chat about moon soil, because moon soil was a complete mystery to scientists, really, until we got to the moon and found out what it was like. We didn't know what it was going to be like. There we go. So I've done my flower. So I'll now put a little layer of hundreds and thousands in. Yeah, we thought that moon soil might be really soft. They were quite worried that, I mean, this is incredible, that the astronauts were going into space to land on the moon without knowing this, but there was some concern that the, the soil on the moon might be so soft that the moon lander might just sink into it. Luckily, that did not happen. Um, it turns out that moon soil, well, if you feel your flower, the flower is really soft here, yeah? and the reason that your flower is so soft is because it's teeny tiny little particles that are quite smooth. Um, and earth soil is very smooth because uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on on the moon, on the earth. We've got a lot of processes. We've got water flows over soil and wind blows it around. And you know how like when you find glass on the beach, sometimes it's quite smooth because it's been bashed about. It's the same with earth soil. Um, the wind and whatever has made our soil quite kind of smooth and very, very small particles. Whereas the soil on the earth, it's more like our sand. It's quite sharp and spiky because there's no atmosphere on the moon. There's no wind. There's obviously no rivers flowing. So yeah, it turns out it's quite scritchy scratchy is moon soil. So apparently it did kind of damage their equipment. It did uh, 
sort of scratch their their clothes but at least they didn't sink into it okay i'm doing the last layer which is cocoa powder right so we've done moon soil we better talk about craters since we're about to make a crater what is a crater well the craters of the moon are basically dents <laughs> they're where asteroids rocks hurtling through space have hit the moon and left a dent Got a bit mad with the cocoa powder but it's the last show i'll do here we go i'll show you one here's a very famous uh, moon crater the copernicus crater so it's this white thing here it's what i've drawn all over my face for you know your learning reasons here we go so the the craters are these sort of white dots with what's called rays, these lines, rays, coming off them in all different directions, yeah? That's the Kepler crater. We are going to try and remember those later. Um, so, yeah, it's just formed when rocks hit the moon. So why doesn't Earth have craters? Well, it's because um, we've got an atmosphere. We've got a lovely blanket of gas which burns the asteroids up. So, you know, like if you rub your hands together, they get nice and warm. It's the same with the asteroid coming into Earth. It hits Earth's atmosphere, which is basically just particles. They, the particles bash against it and it gets hot. And it sort of breaks apart. So you don't get, luckily, uh, many asteroids bashing into the Earth. And even when you do, we've got processes going on. The Earth's crust, we've discussed this, is constantly moving around. And obviously we've got uh, yeah, like rivers and wind. So there's very few signs of craters on Earth because even if a crater does get made by an asteroid bashing into the Earth, eventually it just sort of gets, gets worn down. That doesn't happen on the Moon. What happens on the Moon stays on the Moon. So the astronauts' footprints where they walked on the Moon are still there because there's no wind to blow them away. Right, have you got set up? This is what I've done. Cocoa powder, hundreds and thousands. Don't worry if you forgot about them, they're not really essential. And flour on the bottom. I've put the whole lot on a baking tray because this is going might get a bit splashy. And the first thing to do is to move any electronic equipment as far away from the baking tray as you can. A lot of people hoovering their computers after yesterday's lesson. And then, yeah, we just get a little pebble. Some people yesterday were using marbles, which is genius because uh, they're, they're clean. So then you can make cookies afterwards. I have got some little bits of fossil, actually and a devil's toenail. <laughs> Here we go. So these are going to be our asteroids and you just drop them into your baking tray. Well, ho hopefully we should see a crater, let's try. So um, I'm going to go a bit higher than normal because it hasn't bounced out yet and I would like that to happen. So I'm going to go so no, about there, let's see. Oh yes! Okay, I didn't get a bounce, but look at that. Look at those beautiful rays. It's just like on the moon, isn't it? Wow, lovely. Keep that crater, please. You can take your bit out if you like, but keep the hole because we'll do something with that a bit later. So sometimes they come in at an angle, obviously. So let's do another one, but from an angle. Boop. Hey. Oh, splendid. So that is actually a very good model, obviously, because it's NASA. It's a very good model for what actually happens. So... You might notice that the one that came in at an angle, the rays are more one side than the other side. Some hundreds and thousands will have sprayed out. NASA said that that was to represent like the different minerals that are in different areas of the moon. So NASA can learn a lot about what's happened to the moon looking at these craters. Yeah. Um, then you've got those lovely big long rays coming out. The reason that the craters are white is because that fresher material that's splurged out when the meteorite hits uh, reflects light better. Uh, and we'll look at why uh, the other bits of the moon are very dark in a minute. Right, so if you formed a crater, we need to look at how mountains form. So on Earth, how mountains form is amazing, right? The Earth's crust is broken up into bits called tectonic plates. The Earth's crust is constantly moving around. When the Earth's crust bashes into each other like that, it forms mountains. That's how Mount Everest formed. That doesn't happen on the moon. The moon doesn't have those same kind of processes how moon mountains are formed because there are some i will show you some can you see some can you see a, a mountain range in this picture like a long stream of not stream is it what do you call it a mountain range a streak of mountains so this is a this is a crater obviously with the rays 
The mountains are, well, here's some, a very famous mountain range on the moon. This is the Apennine mountain range. And how it formed, well, the shape is a bit of a clue, actually. If you go back to your uh, craters, try and just f imagine that there's obviously like meteorites of all different sizes, asteroids of all different sizes hitting the moon at different times. Just push down sort of next to your one side of your crater and see what happens, right? Imagine that's happening all over the place. What happens is you've now got the inside of a crater on one side and the inside of a crater on the other side. And you've, you've, you've sort of, you can make mountains, yeah? So that's how the mountains on the moon form. There you go. Bit of, bit of cheating there. There, I've got something that looks a bit like a mountain range. So you can see the Apennine Mountains, they are a little bit curvy, aren't they? So this is the edge of a massive crater. Eventually has been, you know, sort of demolished by other meteorites, asteroids, forgive me, coming in and form that mountain range. There you go. So that's how mountains on the moon are formed. Uh, it's just the rim of a crater. Let's look at how the uh, Maria are formed. The Maria is a sort of posh word for the seas of the moon, which are not actually seas. Um, by sea, a sea would be water. There isn't a large body of water on the moon. How the seas of the moon were formed is, well, let's do a teacher bit do some drawing. So you get your crater, yeah? the crater forms. A long time ago, the moon was volcanic. It's not anymore, but it was. So underneath the surface of the moon was liquid rock, yeah, like magma. And what happened was some of it leaked into the bottom of the crater and formed uh, what we call Maria. In fact, I'll write that down for you. So one, one C on the moon is called a, well it looks like mare, I think you actually say Mari, and more than one C on the moon is called uh, Maria, wait, C's. Oh, I'm writing backwards, sorry. I have to write backwards on Facebook, but I don't on YouTube, it's very confusing. One C is called a mare, or Mari, and more than one C, two C's are called Maria, isn't that lovely? Um, but of course they're not seas. They're not seas at all because they're not formed by water, they're formed by volcanic rock, liquid rock, and that's why there are lots of dark patches on the moon because volcanic rock is darker. Here we go. So here are some, some seas, some Maria. The Sea of Tranquility, isn't that lovely? And uh, the Sea of Crises, here they are. Um, so yes, all the dark bits that you can see are Maria. That's volcanic rock that's leaked out a very long time ago and then hardened. Um, so what have we got? We've got craters. Those are the big white ones with the rays. We've got all the black bits of Mari. We've got a uh, sort of mountain ridge. You can just make that out there. And the, the last one is Terra, which is basically the kind of the bit in the middle. Like obviously there are bits of the moon that aren't volcanic rock and aren't very bright white craters. That's the Mari, essentially. Okay, so whoop, 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 whoop. here we go. Right, first of all, we will learn about the bits of the moon in a sec. But are you ready for a quiz? Oh no, we just need to model uh, Amari. So if you've got some water, thought it'd be fun finally to make a sea in the moon. So if you've still got a crater available, pour some water into it. Why is this not a good model? Because it wasn't water that formed the seas of the moon. It was boiling hot liquid rock and it obviously came up out of the moon, not onto the moon. But come on, I mean, it's just fun, isn't it? Let's fill a crater with water before we move on. Oh, ah! That's a little moth, it's gone. There we go. So that would be like a very dark patch on the moon in our model. Pretty good, isn't it? Put some more in there. Splendid. So we've got the Mari, the sea, the Maria, I should say. Uh, I guess this bit is just the Terra, the sort of bit in the middle, and I guess this bit's kind of become a mountain mountain range now. Fabulous. Okay, see, that was a lot of information, wasn't it? I'm gonna put this to one side now. I'm gonna make cookies with that later. I think we'd better do a quiz, because uh, if you didn't take all that in, the quiz will be a good way of teaching you it. And if you did take it all in, then getting answers right on a quiz is always fun, isn't it? Okay, question one. I've, I'm just gonna give you five seconds for each one. Question one, 
What is the proper name for the moon's seas? What is the proper name for the moon's seas? Is it A, Maria, B, Susan, C, oceans, or D, volcanoes? Five, four, three, two, one. Well done if you said A, Maria. That is the correct answer. Uh, two, why aren't they really seas? Why aren't the seas of the moon actually seas? Is it A, they've dried up, B, they're not salty, C, they're not made of water, or D, only Earth has seas. A, they've dried up, B, they're not salty, C, they're not made of water, or D, only Earth has seas. Why aren't what we call the seas of the moon really seas? Five, four, three, two, one. It's because they're not made of water. The answer is C. They're not made of water, they're made of volcanic rock that was liquid and is now solid. Question three, there are five questions. How were the moon's mountains formed? A, they're the edge of a massive crater. B, by the moon's tectonic plates. Or C, scientists don't know. How were the moon's mountains formed? Edge of a massive crater, by the moon's tectonic plates, or scientists don't know. The answer is, they are the edge of massive craters on the moon. Uh, the edge of massive craters. Question four. How does the moon's soil compare to Earth's? How does the moon's soil compare to Earth's? What's the moon's soil like? Is it softer, sharper, or see-through? Five, four, a do, a do, a one. Um, it's sharper, it's rougher. It hasn't been worn down and smoothed by wind because wind is caused by the atmosphere and the Earth does, the moon doesn't have an atmosphere. Well, and the last one. What's the name for the white streaks coming from the moon's craters? What's the name for the white streaks coming from the moon's craters? Is it A, rays? B, blasts, or C, craters. Five, four, three, two, one. It is rays. Well done. If you got that, it was rays. Okay, it's time for the, the good bit. So I have a map of a moon here, and for IGCS astronomy, and also just because like life, and it's interesting, we need to learn some parts of the moon. So first of all, I'm just going to show you the moon, and I'm going to give you 30 seconds to see if you can just remember them. It's hard. You've got to remember the names, and you've got to remember where they are. So we'll just do 30 seconds for you to try and exercise your own brain and then I'll do you a little story time and show you how I've used that to remember them and then we'll play some games. Here we go. Right, 30 seconds. Can you try and remember the Sea of Crises, which is just sort of one little blob on its own? The Sea of Tranquility, which is a you know bigger blob attached to other blobs. The Apennine Mountain Range, we mentioned. Kepler crater, the little one, Copernicus crater, the little middling one, and the Tycho crater, which is at the bottom. 20 seconds now. Seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. It's really hard, isn't it? That was the first step of remembering. Now I'm going to tell you a little story. I've been spoiling you with a lot of story times. So don't expect this every time. A little story about the moon, and then I'll show you how maybe it'll help you to remember them. Have you heard of the man in the moon? Can you see him? If you can't see him, you are not alone. In many parts of Asia, people don't see a man in the moon. They see something else. So uh, you might have heard the phrase, nobody's perfect. But many people believe that humans can reach perfection, become completely enlightened, be totally good. It doesn't happen very often, as you might imagine. Uh, but it did happen, so people believe, 2,400 years ago is a little clue what I'm talking about. Uh, so a person who becomes completely enlightened is known as a Buddha. So this most recent Buddha uh, from 2,400 years ago was called Gautama, and he was the son of an Indian king. And his teaching is known as Buddhism. You've probably heard of Buddhism, right? So since people also believed in reincarnation... It's strange going on with the light, isn't it? I wonder if it's better if I turn my light off. Better. better if it was brighter, better if it was less bright. Mm, seems a bit blurry, doesn't it? 
Maybe a bit of flower on the screen. Okay. Yeah, people also believed in reincarnation. So reincarnation is the idea that a person or an animal's soul doesn't die, it's just reborn in a different body throughout history. So stories started appearing about what Gautama must have been like in his past lives. Like he's reached complete enlightenment. How what did he how was his behaviour like in his past lives to get to that point? So here's one of the stories. There's a lot of stories about his various past lives. In one previous life, the Buddha, before he was a Buddha, was a hare. And he lived with his friends, a jackal, a monkey, and an otter. Couldn't find an artsy like silhouette picture of an otter. And they all lived in a forest. And it was a special forest where spiritual people tended to visit. People who'd kind of given up earthly goods to try and achieve enlightenment. So helping these people on their spiritual journey by giving them food was very much expected. There's one. Got a lot of energy. It's had a lot of gifts. So Sakra, a lord of a sort of heaven of Buddhism, decided to test these animals who lived in the forest, see how generous they were. So he disguised himself as a spiritual wanderer and asked the animals for food. The jackal gave him some milk that he'd found. Lovely, very generous. Uh, the monkey gave him some mango. Splendid, rather than monkey. Uh, the otter gave him some fish. But the hare didn't have anything. He only had grass, and obviously humans don't eat grass. So the hare asked the man to build a fire, which the man did. Can you see where this is going? And then prepared to jump into it so that the man could eat the hare. <gasps> well, instantly Sakura revealed himself, made the fire go cold, and was so touched by the hare's ultimate sacrifice that it said he painted his image onto the moon for all to see so that everyone looking at the moon can remember the selfless hare. Uh, can you see a hare in the moon or the moon rabbit? Another very famous story. I'm thinking if I turn it around. Now, the one I'm going to sort of use today, I don't think is actually the hare that, that most people do see, but th there's a certain hare in the moon that is useful for our needs, right? Can you see that this could be the head of the rabbit or the hare? And then there's two ears coming off here, yeah? And then this is sort of the hare's body. And so this is the sea of crises, which I'm thinking like maybe the hare is having a crisis. It's like a little thought bubble above his head. Like, ah, oh, maybe I shouldn't have thrown myself into the fire. This is the Tycho crater. So maybe like tougher tail. Oops. So I've turned it on its side now, but hopefully you can still see, right? The tail, the head of the hare, the ears of the hare here, the sea of crises, the little thought bubble above the hare's head. Yeah, you getting this? The Tycho crater, like tougher tail, because it looks like a big white sort of pom pom -y tail of a rabbit or a hare. And then the Kepler crater, I don't know, we'll have to think of something else for that. The Apennine mountain range is kind of sort of trying to slice off the hare's head from his body. Yeah? Not just me, right? <laughs> so what we'll do to try and learn these names better, we're going to play Crater Waiter. So if you're new, um, there's a new theatre science mascot. When we did the reuse recycle lesson, I made this absolute monstrosity to try and teach people that this is not how you reuse. This is not what reusing means. This is now harder to recycle. It's not a good idea. But of course, everyone loved it and called it Forkish. And now it's a theatre science mascot. So the amazing Bastion drew me a picture on the recycled paper that he made of Forkish. So Forkish is a waiter. He's got to deliver food to astronauts living in the different craters as quickly as possible. So I'm going to give him an instruction and I want you to look at or point to the crater that is correct. Okay, here's Forkish. You ready? You need to take some cake to the Tycho crater. Which one is the Tycho crater? There's a lot of craters here. Ooh, which one's the t -t 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 Tycho crater? Tail of the hair. You just see the hair's ears poking out here. Uh, well done, Forkish. That one is the Tycho crater. All right, take a bun now, please, to the Copernicus crater. Which one's the Copernicus crater? All right, so if that one's Tycho, it's got to be one of these two. Copernicus, we learned about him in last week's story time. It is that one. It's the kind of middle in one. T to the Tycho crater. Can you remember which one the Tycho crater is? Go on, Forkish, as fast as possible. Yes, it is. It's that one. It's a big fluffy tail. Pairs to the Kepler crater now. Which one's the Kepler crater? So there are quite a few craters here, aren't there? Look, there's one there. There's another couple up there. The Kepler crater is the... Kepler needs pears. It's the little one just next to the Copernicus crater there. Well done. Uh, Tycho is demanding chips now. Oh, Tycho. Which one's the Tycho crater? Look at it. Yes, well done. Kepler's pears are mouldy. You've got to go and collect the Kepler pears. Where's the Kepler crater? Well done, it is that one. Next. Yeah, so Copernicus wants a pizza. 
Which one is the Copernicus crater? It's... Look at it! Stare at it! Yes. Bore it into your soul. Well done. Tycho wants ketchup for his chips. Which one's the Tycho crater? Come on, because you remember it now. You might not remember it when you're staring at the moon trying to tell people about what I've learned. The Tycho crater is the big one. Well done. Right, have you got that? Okay, so now you've got the craters, hopefully. What I've done is um, I've taken away the names of all the different bits of the moon and I've replaced them with a letter. And I've put the names of the places on the side. So you've got to look at the name of the place, find where it is on the moon, and find the letter that goes with it and make a word. I've done you an example, so we'll do this one together. Here we are. Let's play what's the word. So I've got a list here, right? Uh, the Copernicus crater, the Apennine mountain range, and the Kepler crater. So how you play is, where's the Copernicus crater? It is C, yeah? So the first letter of the word would be a C. The Apennine mountain range is this long thing here, chopping the rabbit's head off. So that's an A. And the Kepler crater is the little one next to the Copernicus crater. So the answer here would be, we've got a C, we've got an A, we've got an R. So the answer is car. All right, you get it? Go on then. What's this word, please? I'll give you, um, I'll give you 10 seconds for this one and then we'll get a bit faster and a bit harder as we go. Three, two, one. So the Sea of Crises is the, the little kind of thought bubble above the rabbit's head. Wow, oh, what's left for tea? The Apennine mountain range is this long bit here underneath the rabbit's head. That's an A. So we've got S, A. And the Tycho crater at the bottom is a P. So the answer was sap. Well done if you got that. Okay, getting a bit longer now. What's the word? You've got the Sea of Crises, the Tycho Crater, the Apennine Mountain Range, the Copernicus Crater, and the Sea of Tranquility. I'll give you mm, 12 seconds, but I won't count out loud because that would be intensely annoying. One. Okay, the sea of crises is a little thought bubble above the rabbit's head. You got it? So this is rabbit's head, rabbit's ears, rabbit's body, rabbit's tail. Yeah, the bottom. So we've got S. The Tycho crater is a big white one, so that's a P. The Pennine mountain range is the A, so it's Spa. Copernicus crater is a C. And the sea of tranquility is an E. So well done if you got that the answer was space. Moving on. What is the word? We've got the Tycho Crater, the Sea of Tranquility, the Pennine Mountain Range, the Copernicus Crater, and the Sea of Tranquility again. Five. Four. Three. Two. Tycho Crater is the big one here, the golf ball-y thing. So it begins with a P. Sea of Tranquility is sort of in between the rabbit's ears, so that's an E. And then you've got an A. And the Copernicus Crater is the C. And then it's the E again, so the answer was peace. Okay, I think one or two more. Two more, I think. What's the word? answer was scare. Well done if you got that. I think this is the last one. Yeah, it is. answer is 
races. Well done if you got that. So the, the Kepler crater is the little one, right? That begins with an, well, in this begins with an R. And the Copernicus one is next to it. Let's see. All right, then. Right. Uh, so here it is again. I'm going to be super mean now. Because obviously the moon looks different, doesn't it? From different places in the world. There's not like an up and a down to the moon. So I'm going to flip the moon around again and see if you can spot where just a couple of different things are, okay? So the moon is now at a different angle. Can you find the sea of tranquility? So the sea of tranquility is where, you can just look at it, okay? I'll point to it on the screen. It, this is where Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed on July the 20th, 1969. The first humans ever to walk on the moon. Thought the space lander might just sink into it. Luckily it didn't. So where is the sea of tranquility now that we've changed the direction of the moon? It's it's the one that's kind of nestled within the hare's ears. Yeah, so it's this one. Well done if you got that. Uh, where is the sea of crises? So it's not called this for this reason. Um, but the sea of crises is where the Russian craft Luna 15 crashed on July the 21st it says here, uh, 19, 1969. So this was just a day after the Americans had already landed. Where is the Sea of Crises on this new moon? Can you spot it? It's I've changed the angle of the moon again, haven't I? Just to test you. It's there. Well done if you got that. Look, interesting little fact about this bit. Um, so obviously this is the middle of the space race when this was happening. So America and the Russia, like top secret, sort of battling against each other figuratively speaking, to try and be the first to the moon. So the Russians had sent this Luna 15. There, wasn't any, there weren't any people on board, um, but the idea was that it would land on the moon first and they could gather up some moon soil and bring it back down to Earth and be the first people to have moon soil. Um, but yes, uh, it crash landed uh, a day after the Americans had already landed on the moon and walked out and got the soil. But the, the kind of nice thing about this is that's two moon vehicles really quite close to each other. So in order to keep it safe and for them not to crash into each other, the, um, this is the first case, I think, of America and Russia just starting to work together because they had to send each other a little bit of information like, oh yeah, we're going to be here at this time. So, you know, don't hit us, please. Um, and obviously now, if you, if you were all different uh, people from all different countries together on the International Space Station working together. Okay, one more then. Where's the Tycho crater? I've flipped the moon again. Where is that Tycho crater? It's about one million years old. The longest ray on the Tycho crater is over 900 miles long. Have you got it? Yeah, it's a really big one, right? There's the Tycho crater. Where's the Copernicus crater? Just throwing this in. Where's the Copernicus crater? Can you see it? Get your eyeballs on it. It's this one. So where's the Kepler crater? Yes, well done. It's this little one right next to it. Very good, you lot. I have to admit, I, did, I didn't know any. I had not remembered any of that before this lesson, but I think I probably could now. Uh, right. It is time for me to do my little ads, and then I'll show you the genuine, well, not genuine, I've made them up, but they're very similar, um, questions that you would get on this at GCSE. A little summary task as well, so you can see how well you've understood. Uh, but yes, first, if you would like to pay me for my job, it is the best job ever. Uh, I do a free, everything that I do is free. So the Home Ed show is uh, three times a week on Facebook and YouTube, whatever's best for people. And I do a little show with a story time as well. So this week it's on code breaking. We're gonna do like a secret message writing activity, details on my Facebook page. Yeah, everything's free. All the worksheets are free and this is because most people are supporting me with like five or six quid a month so if you go to my children not you don't you be doing it but there's an about section here somewhere on youtube if you go to the about section and you click sign up it takes you to this website called coffee where you can sign up to support me with five pounds or six pounds a month and i'll send you nice things because did i mention best job ever love doing it so enough people are sending me five or six quid a month that i could not only do like two free things a week but yeah i can send you these rainbow glasses check this out i'll send you these in the post look they make you see rainbows the rainbow is hidden in that every day that's so cool uh and i'll send you some information about how they work i'll also send you theater science magazine which i'm very proud of i write it and graphic designer husband graphically designs it so this one's on mold so i send you a free biodegradable plastic bag so you can uh, make a little box on the back here 
and fill it with food and grow some mould and hopefully maybe work out various what kinds of mould it is. There's a comic about the discovery of penicillin which I've written and husband has illustrated. It takes us ages but we're very proud of it. There's a choose your own adventure, you are a mould expert in a museum, do you know enough, will you be fired or not? Yeah, thank you to everyone who has subscribed to Theatre Science magazine. So that comes out every two months and but you'll get this issue straight away with the rainbow glasses if you sign up now and you can cancel at any time like any time not business it's just me you can just message me and be like oh i, I accidentally paid you twice can i have my money back and i'll just go yeah uh, and you get some badges as well if you sign up with six pounds a month and you you just get my deep gratitude it's so awesome that these lessons everything can be free for people who need it right you ready for the gcse questions here we go on the moon pictured which letters represent the sea of crisis the Tycho Crater, the Copernicus Crater, and the Sea of Tranquility. Four marks for that. I've been a bit mean. I've labelled some things that we haven't looked at as well. And which sentence best describes the Maria? Is it volcanic rock, elevated, riverbed, or particulate? Those are your GCSE-ish questions. And the summary task. This is hard, I think. Sketch as many features of the moon. So remember we, what we did in the first activity, like craters, mountains, Maria... Sketch as many of those as you can think of and label them to show how they formed. And an after lesson task, which is very well timed if you're watching this live or in the next week or so, because the moon is very bright in the sky. It's pretty big at the moment. If you're up late enough, go out and have a look at it. See if you can describe what you can see to a family member or just show them a picture of the moon. And, uh, and yeah, because I love this lesson because I think at the start, most people would have just seen a moon. And now you're probably seeing all kinds of features and got all the different words in your head. OK, I'm going to be quiet and drink coffee so that you can answer these questions. Do the summary task, please. I think that'd be very good for you. I'll give you, I don't know what, 30 seconds and then I'll do it with you. I'll do it on the board now. Um... Um, for the summary question I've got asteroid hits moon makes crater what else have we got oh yeah the mountains okay mountains at the edge of an old crater and I'll do that bit with you. Okay, should we go through the answers then? On this moon, the sea of crises, the thought bubble above the rabbit's head is A. Well done if you got that. The Tycho crater is E. The Copernicus crater is C, sort of nestled in the hare's armpit. And the sea of tranquility, where the first people landed on the moon, that is B. Well done. And the sentence that best describes the Maria is volcanic rock. Uh, right, have you got all those? I'll just show you what I did for the summary task. Here we go. That bit. You sort of propping up, don't you? Prop you up on this stick. Here we go. So I've got... Uh, I've drawn an asteroid hitting the moon and making a dent. That's how craters are made. Oh, I suppose I should put the rays in, shouldn't I? So like material flies off and makes a ray. That's not that's too long, but I'll just put a ray because we did learn that word. I've got the terra here, it's just like the yeah, the flat bit in the middle. Uh, I've put an arrow to the edge of the crater saying that mountains are the edge of very old craters. And just here I've had to make another crater so that I can put some uh, volcanic rock underneath the crater, which a long time ago, it wouldn't happen now, yeah, but seeps in to make uh, well, let's call that a Mari, I suppose, the sea. 
Mari. I'll put Mari equals C. Uh, volcanic rock. And that's why it's darker. Because this uh, volcanic rock is darker. Right. I think that's everything, isn't it? So this kind of goes asteroids and then uh, the mountains and the Mari and the terrace just sitting there. We've got the rays. Yeah, splendid. Uh, interesting little point. This is what NASA do. The moon, when you're talking about the Earth's moon, would have a capital letter. But other moons don't have capital letters. So if you're just talking about like one of Jupiter's moons, you could just put a small M. But for the Earth's moon, you can use a capital M. Different people do it different ways, but I just tend to stick with what uh, NASA are doing because I figure, you know, they probably know what they're doing. Um, we should go through some English stuff for this astronomy lesson, actually, because it's quite interesting. So the a lot of people say the Earth, don't they? But NASA don't use the phrase the Earth because they say you wouldn't say like the Saturn or the Venus. So they just say Earth. It's quite a hard habit to get into. Like if you're talking about Earth's crust, don't say the Earth's crust. There you go. So you can pick me up on it if you hear me. But again, Earth, if it's the Earth, would have a capital E. Probably shouldn't be telling you this because we should probably work this into a lesson, shouldn't we? Because it's quite important, really. Right. What I'm doing now is I'm just on my Facebook page to see if anybody said hello. <gasps> and I need to show you the back of my hat. I promised that I would do that. There are all these comments. Lara, show us the back of your hat. All right, you ready? There you go, isn't it so cute? This is very, very much a child's hat, you might have noticed. What is it? I think it's a little, is it a, an Arctic fox? They're not grey, are they? Is it a wolf? I don't know. It's super cute, is what it is. I wish it was bigger so that I could wear it out and about. She says, obviously I'm wearing it on the internet, which is quite public, but it's only you, it doesn't matter. Ah, uh, oh, nice, your daughter is enjoying these, that's good. Hissy is watching, yay! Hissy, there's no flames in this lesson. Hissy, if you don't know, is a toy, Robin's toy snake, which is made of quite flammable material. Ah, oh, Suki and Arza and Eunice are here, are you? You're gonna make cookies today. After seeing things with the rainbow glasses, real life looks so dull. This is true, this is true, oh no. Mary asking a question. Oh no, Mary. <laughs> Mary asks, when the Maria forms, doesn't the molten rock cool down eventually and go hard? Yes, we did say that. Do you know what? I don't actually know. Let's just Google it together. I'll read the other comments first and then everyone else who wants to can go. Our printer breaks all the time. Thanks, Jack and Mary, if that does actually make me feel better. Oh, Rue is excited about the astronomy lesson. Oh, that's awesome. And there's Rowan at the bottom, yes. <laughs> Rowan, who presumably has just got rainbow glasses like attached to your head. Yeah, that's a good question, actually. Should we look at when, when the Maria formed? I'm just gonna Google it. When did the moon's Maria form? Whoa! Mary, what great question! Between 3.1 and 3.9 billion years ago. And they're the, wow, and they're the youngest things on the lunar surface apart from the more recent craters. Wow, nearly four billion years ago. Very cool. All right, thank you so much for coming, you lot. Uh, next week, I haven't put the invite up actually, but next week we're looking at the relationship between the moon and the earth and the sun. So like s eclipses and that kind of thing. Um, and then yes, like I say, if you want to come to the show, we're going to write secret messages and then hold them over candle flames. Bring an adult for that one. Hissy, stay out of the way. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for coming. I'll see you all very soon. Bye.